Hey everyone, this is Josh Carney. I'm a recording engineer, musician, composer, and educator. I absolutely love using Studio One for mastering, and in this course, I'll show you all of the mastering capabilities in Studio One 4. The big advantage of mastering in Studio One is its integrated project window, which is intended for mastering projects. I'm gonna be using the Mac OS version of Studio One, but I'll mention both Mac and PC shortcuts in these tutorials. So instead of creating a new song like you would normally do for writing, tracking, or a mixing session, I'm gonna create a new project. So you can give your project the title here, you can choose the location here, and then choose the sample rate here. Now, in my case, the native sample rate for the files that I'm importing into my project is 48 kilohertz. Even if you're going to export at a lower sample rate, I still suggest working at the sample rate of the files that you're importing. This allows the plugins that you use to operate at the higher sample rate as well. I'll ignore this option for now. In a later video, I'll explain what DDP images are and how to create them in Studio One. So this is the project window. It looks quite a bit different than the song page does. And the first thing I wanna do is show you how to import files. So to do this, you just go up to Project, Import File, find the audio files that you wanna import, and then click Open. Now most of the navigation and transport shortcuts are the same as when using the song page. Down here, you can press E and W to zoom horizontally. You can set the playhead back to the beginning by pressing either period on your number pad or comma on the main keyboard, and you can press spacebar to start and stop. After you play back, you'll see the frequency spectrum meter here, the output and loudness meter here, and the phase and correlation meter here. I'll talk more about these meters in detail in later videos. So playback is pretty similar to using the song page. If I want to create a loop range, you can do that here, and then you can toggle your loop with the forward slash key on your keyboard. You can hover over a spot and hold Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, then click to set the back end of the loop range, or hover over a spot on the front end and hold Command on a Mac or Control on a PC, and then click to set the front end of the loop range. So these shortcuts are pretty helpful if you want to just focus in on one part of a song and loop it. You can also right click and choose Enable Play Start Marker or press Option P just like you can in the song page. And to do this on a PC, press Alt P. And if I press the stop button, press start again. Why does your love... It starts the playback from the play start marker again. So that's all I wanna show you when it comes to importing audio and playback for now. In the next video, I'll give you an overview of how to use the project window. But before that, I wanna talk a bit about some of the fundamentals of mastering and what mastering really is. When you get a finished mix from a client, for the most part, the balance of the instruments and vocals are where the artist or band wants them to be. As the mastering engineer, you don't want to completely change that, but you do have some freedom to massage the master a bit. I've mastered hundreds and hundreds of songs and projects, and I always find that getting a good master comes down to five basic things. One, correcting slight frequency imbalances. In particular, balancing the highs and lows and cutting the mid-low mud from the mix. This can involve the use of EQs and multiband compression. Number two, gluing the master together as a unit. Adding some gentle stereo bus compression to the master really helps to tame out of control transients, instruments, and vocal parts that really poke out in the mix. This isn't always necessary though if the mix was done really well. Number three, filling the stereo space. One thing I love doing in mastering is accentuate the stereo image of a mix so that instruments don't clash with each other as much. And you can also enhance the stereo image and perceived size of the mix. This can be done with stereo imagers or by tweaking the image with mid-side processing. Number four, loudness standards. Adding a brick wall limiter to increase the gain on the track and limit it to a standard loudness level that's ready for radio, CD, and digital release. Like it or hate it, 
the standard loudness level for modern masters is usually somewhere between negative 16 and negative 10 LUs. I'll talk more about loudness standards in detail in a later video. And number five is pretty simple. Trimming, fading, and spacing. This is just editing the spacing between songs on a multi-song project. Making sure that tracks are properly faded or cross-faded in some cases. You don't want to release a song with five seconds of silence before the song starts, and you don't want to have a song start right at bar one, beat one either. So that's just a quick introduction to mastering in Studio One.